Hello, guys. So I've got Gen. How, how do you pronounce it? Is it Gen Genevieve? Genevieve. Genevieve. Back on the channel, uh, we did a video interview a few months ago. Um, yes. It was years before before the bull run, and uh, so much has gone on, and uh, with with Web two migrating onto Web three, and me and John, we have, we were just having a chat about what's going on in the sector, and uh, sharing her insights. And so we're going to dig into some questions about how the world has changed. You know, many years ago when we first met, to to what is happening now in, in the sector, and so this is going to be a very, I would say educating interview first and foremost it's all about education for me and it's all about teaching others about blockchain and and, and, and cryptocurrencies and i like to use blockchain because i think it's starting to become more and more evolved over time since we last last spoke and as you know i've also built my own venture to over thirty two and a half thousand followers on linkedin interviewing many uh, leading experts. I'm now an ambassador for IOD as well, Finance and Fintech Wealth Group. And so me and John, we have, have decided to talk about blockchain, talk about Web3 and so forth. And so it's great to have her on the channel. How, 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 how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Hang in there, as I say. <laughs> She's hanging in there. We were just having a chat just before and we were talking about all sorts and uh you know, uh, it's it's an ever changing industry, and uh, keeping up with the times, I would say, is challenging. Would Would you agree? It's changing. I think that um, the the two shock waves of the last year. So you and I actually got to talk before, before we the met. Run, yeah. Before the um, mm -hmm. it was right around the bull run, and so we didn't get to speak since the crash. That's right. Um, <laughs> The Voyager three three I whatever it is Celsius plus, oh, Terra uh, Luna yeah. yeah but I think also um, things which are not looked at in the same way is the demise of the big consortium such as the um, the one which was led by Musk which was around with IBM and also the other consortium around insurance which basically decided to shut down right. I think that. Um, the premises of those consortium might have been some of the challenges that I would lead there and also uh, a viewpoint of what the technology is all about. We talked, you, you opened up and said about Web3. In my point of view, Web3 right now is still... Uh, yeah, where are we? Mm -hmm. We are in an ideal. We're actually moving to 2.5. Okay. Challenges that I would say is there's a lot of marketing out there and not a lot of action. Why? Because those action are still, we still need to get the technology, the UI, UX to catch up. The ideals are there. And I think that we kind of need to define, does Web3 require a blockchain? Just, or a just going back to, to my followers, we are discussing Web3. So how would you explain Web3 in your eyes? Uh, Web3 is about, you know, we lead, read a lot of stuff about how it is about bringing back the power to the individual, for us to own our own data, for us to monetize through our own data, and for us to be able to have trusted interaction, either as individual with uh, entities or entities to entities. And not needing the intermediary, which is usually the legal aspect or the financing aspect, the, fi the finance organization to make the payment. Now, that's why I said it's ideal, because you still need to have an agreement. What you can do is to demonstrate that we interacted, but for what purpose still need some sort of agreement. And this is where those smart contract, but really smarter smart contract need to come in. Because right now, it's just saying, I'm trading with you, you're trading with yeah. me, and put case met. The, you know, we are starting to see mostly with some of the stuff coming in AI, you can start thinking people, people are much more comfortable. So we're seeing more happening in that. The other piece is saying, we don't need a financial institution. Uh, as we know, crypto, sending, receiving can be 
daunting at times. And it's very is- difficult to type in your 12 digit password and it's not easy UX and yeah, so all those things. And you know, do I need to have you know, I've gone through the somebody doing a deal in a parking lot all the way to now great applications such as um uh, mm. they are they it'll come in a minute <laughs> i can't believe the name just There's so much going uh, on yeah jeff, jeff hancock's company right and, which is a regulated crypto uk which makes it easy to do trading and receive crypto yes there are certain reporting things but at least it's no longer trying to find the guy who's going to the parking lot and believe me when we did the parking lot exchange he changed the price but because you wanted to get your cash you just go through because you don't know if somebody else is going to come in and jump on you with the cash. So all these little things, we have improved quite a bit, but we still need to improve to get to mass um, adoption. adoption. Yeah. And then this whole idea of you and I can trade without anybody in between is still <clears throat> idealistic in some level because we need that UI UX to make it easy. I mean, I've given up on some time trying to get an NFT because it wants to connect to my open seas, my wallet. And so there's you know, too many, too many vehicles in the way, you would say. Too many moving parts. Right. And even somebody coming in from the space, I find it sometime like I need to be in that quiet space, no distraction, because you can make one wrong move, either somebody, you know, and when you hear about these like very much well-known people who have been in the space who are getting their money and their crypto taken away you sort of are going oh my god do i want to be part of this do you know yeah i i know i had a conversation with my sister a few a few months ago where she was like oh i don't want to get into the wi-fi because somebody might steal my data (laughs) data versus your crypto and your you think it's a reality for many of us. And we saw so, that fall, didn't we, in Terra Luna and Celsius with these parties not not giving security for me. It's not there. That's what I'm trying to say. This is, but this is the key. The blockchain itself is safe. It's once you have... The parties around it, yeah, the channels around it. Do you have the right protection? The right Can people. Can castle be taken over? And in our rush sometimes to deliver things, we don't think cyber. And also, we can't stop people from clicking. I can't tell you how many emails I get a day of people just phishing. I mean, today I deleted four. And so I have to be vigilant. And really say, okay, does this make sense? Is this something I requested? And sometimes it looks yeah. like you requested. So all those things are aspects that we have to clean up. Do you think we security to... is letting us down now with all the, the hacks? And or do you think we need more regulation, more stern rules? The regulation is a different thing than... Totally different, yeah. However, we need to self-regulate. If we don't self-regulate, then we're going to fail. It just takes one person crying, one person making noise. And right now we're just getting, we're the ones who are getting hurt. But as soon as others start being part of it, and, you know, I think Terra Luna, three, uh, you know, three more, hours, yeah. where really we were still the one being hurt. What we've seen with FTX is it's permeated beyond the crypto world. When you're hearing that a UK uh, entity, uh, uh, it's a UK non-for-profit charity who's getting investigated because they receive funding from FTX. And it's not about them doing anything wrong. The trustee did what they were supposed to, but it's more the assets and understanding if the asset of the charity have been breached. That's when we start really seeing prematuration. And I asked somebody about that when I saw the posting, how long is that going to last? And I think we're going to see a few more years of that. So now we're no longer our own little environment. We're actually pushing into real life. 
and bad stories like this. So it used to be, this is used for, uh, you know, the black market. Yes. Now coming, it's going to hurt you. It's going to create for you, you know, when, when the FTX has also done things with pension plans and all these things, you start really affecting people's livelihood, people's life. Should we have more FDIC insurance involved in this, like how we have with the traditional financial world where insurance is provided if, say, if you lose your money, you get hacked, you get you get compensated. We're not seeing that actually, as of yet. I, I actually, crypto gold, you know, yeah, tell I me. Do you know of a wallet who's going to come out with that? I know Coinbase are doing it. They're starting Coinbase, to do it. Coinbase is doing it, but actually you needed there's no wallet, wallet. Mm. i do know one which is coming i will give you the interested they announce they will actually have the um the insurance as part of it the indemnity insurance and i think this is what's needed this is what's needed yeah it's that indemnity that security and once we have because remember um insurance has to understand the risk quantify the risk in order to sort of uh, be able to support it. So going back to what we were saying, mm -hmm. it's we are moving down the road and that's why I call it a 2.5. We are starting to understand. We've been talking about the idea and now we need to build on the idea. I think this year is a great time to actually do it. Downturns are best for innovation. Amazing. So that's, a, that's, that's clear as clear as gold to me um where would you see web3 moving now in 2023 i mean i just spoke off to a number of parts spoke to a number of parties and a lot of them are saying we need more regulation um around web3 especially around nfts how do you see it becoming adopted and is adoption there we have to get i hate to say it a few more adults in the room we have to regulate ourselves. We have to set the rules. We have to explain what we're doing. We're notoriously bad about not saying what we're doing, which then forces this whole aspect. Too much wasted capital, would you say? Do you think capital's going to waste? Do you think, or people here just to make a quick buck? Or how do you see? I think up to now, we've been looking at quick bucks. We're still okay. having a few people who are looking to make a quick buck. When you need to be looking at these aspects, you need to invite not only the developers, you need to invite the regulators, you need to invite the, the policymakers, mm -hmm. and you need to sort of, so I'm happy, actually, I didn't tell you I've joined GBBC, so you'll be the first one to know I've joined BBC, and that is an opportunity. People say, what do they do? Well, what they do is they bring everybody to the table to start really talking about how and it cannot be a conversation where we in Web3 only are. We need to mm -hmm. bring Web2 so that we can get to the middle ground and travel together to this. And so- but what's frustrating you, Joan Reeve? What is, what is the first, is there some sort of frustration or somewhere along the line here? With, with all the scandals and everything that collapsed in 2022, is there something going on? Uh, for me, the frustration has been that those who have the cap the capital is there but the right. capital is very risk averse right now because okay. they don't know what you know when i looked at it before a lot of capital went into very much this whole exchange we're starting to see some of it go into the metaverse but these are not real metaverse these are e-commerce looking to be web3 right Fundamental is a lot of those people making those investments are not interested in the technology. They're interested in the user acquisition and they don't care how it's done as long as you're getting the users and you've got somebody who you can sell something to. So is that when... pushing away corporates and, and sort of leaders in from a traditional aspect to where we are now? Or... I think we're starting to see some corporate CBCs get involved okay. in, in the space very much in the sense of what can they get from it is still the issue. So until they come in and actually look to co-create, we have that dialectic coming in. Where we're seeing some, some movement now is really in the carbon, um, the carbon market, 
because there's been so much greenwashing and they're getting their asses kicked. So they right. see opportunity there. However, greenwashing coupled with block washing makes for a mess. And as you know, I, I like to think myself very much of a technologist in that sense that if I say I'm going to deliver technology, I want to see under the cover what's sitting there. And it, it, there's a lot which is missing and people are not delivering on it. And so we need to not only self-regulate from the standpoint of safety of financial, we also need to self-regulate and actually delivering what we say we would. So which means you can actually get things onto GitHub and make clear that it's not open source. This is just more open for people to see under the cover. Yeah. And that's the, the big challenge I would suggest that there are too many people who say they are doing something and when you but get to, it's not functional. So you know, there, there's the frustration. So to all my audience, I hope you're enjoying uh, this uh, this uh, update uh, with me and John Vive. And uh, we've definitely talked a, a lot about what's going on in Web3. What what is your the challenges now in Web three? What 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 are the challenges ahead? We're in twenty twenty three. When we spoke, it was about two years ago. A lot has happened since then. What what would you say is now the challenges? You know, Web three came in as a, a new term. Yeah, we were when when we were talking, it was Web two. There was no Web three. Web three is to me still a marketing. Okay, it is an ideal. It is a very good way. It's a nicer way than uh, 4IR, which is the fourth industrial revolution, in that it really is more also uh, about the blockchain environment where 4IR, many a time we were not taken in. 4IR, we talk about everything and not have blockchain. Web3 is our thing. And this is the industrial revolution driven by blockchain technology. We can see, you know, like I'd say through NFTs, things like certification of attendance, certification of knowledge, all those things are now possibilities that we can add in there. But the key to it is we need to stop talking about it. And we start building. And start building and start delivering. And if we are to, as Web3 say, and bring in mass, it cannot be that the only thing you're getting people to do is to invest to make money they have to invest their time to get something out of it knowledge opportunities more commerce and then you get to actually be able to benefit from that but then your service providers right now we don't have enough service providers amazing so would you say are you now involved in many different sort of Web3 projects? Have you seen yourself grow in this space or are you still lacking? So, mm -hmm. For me, my project, when yes. I talk, people see it as a Web3 project because I am bringing the uh, a community into an opportunity to own and to be further down the value chain in what they make. So, now, how in you know we don't they don't know it's blockchain. They just know that they're getting paid, so that's part of the key. I am also getting involved with Neoki, which is a Web three metaverse multiverse, and right. I'm liking this project because it's bringing many different aspects, and the idea is to co uh, collaborate with uh, designers, but not designers which are doing one NFT, but a designer which is has a design and for you to go and visit that and actually take it into your own space. So that's a very that's the next iteration. And how do we get there? I have a call. <laughs> it's a call coming in, is it? <laughs> that's okay. Thank yeah, you. Sure. No, no, no. I have another call I was supposed to be on. Okay. <laughs> We're nearly but, finishing here. Yeah, yeah. So when you finish, I said coming. No, but <laughs> so Neoki is very much around that ideal and working with the team. And there's many aspects to it. The uh, lead um, technology person on this 
is actually someone who I respect a lot. And she has done projects. She's actually working with Chrome Away and she has done a lot of blockchain projects before. So I know it's getting built. So it's not a veneer of we're doing this. And then when you start thinking that nothing has happened as of yet. So it's, we're still in early days. Okay. I, this year is a year we see a lot more actuality and that will allow us to be able to go forward. Amazing. And I just want to wrap this up um, with you. Um, do you see, are you optimistic or, you, or are you pessimistic? I mean, I can, I, I just like to know where do you stand with this whole, because you've moved from this corporate world. I know that you've had a very, uh, extensive experience in, in, in the corporate world and now you're in this world are you optimistic or pessimistic i'm in the middle of the road right now okay. i'm optimistic if we do another uh you know if we have another fiasco like we've had in the last year we have problems um so that's where i'm at with it but i do see opportunities and i right. do see where it can change lives we just have to be measured and we have to also stay the course. There you go, guys. So it's a it's great to have uh, John Weave in the video interview discussing all about uh, what we spoke about last. And we thought we'll catch up and we thought we'll uh, keep people up to date with what's going on in Web3. Obviously, this is quite a serious uh, topic to me as well. Otherwise, we would have not uh, taken our time to do this video interview. So I do like to thank John Viev and myself also for, for, for doing this because, you know, we need more education. We need more clarity. Um, and this is something I'm still still think we're lacking a little bit. So um, we'll we'll get this out and uh, I'm really looking forward to to sharing it. And is anything final you'd like to say? Anything I want to say thank you very much for giving me that opportunity. And um, I'm so happy to get to talk about this. And I really hope, and it's not about discouraging anyone. It's just we need to stay the course, as I say. We need more encouragement. All right, there you go, guys. So thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in the next video interview. Thank you. Bye, all.